Hi, I'm Darren Steele, and this is the Think Queerly podcast. I'm a writer, a deep thinker, and a transformational coach. And on the show, I share skillful strategies to enhance critical thought, open-mindedness, and understanding to benefit the common good. I offer a message of human-heartedness based in my studies of the Tao Te Ching, supported by neuroscientific coaching practices, to help thought leaders and creatives live with integrity and to enjoy more happiness, freedom, and peace of mind. Now, today I'm really happy to welcome my guest on the show, Freddie Lewis. Welcome. Thank you for having me. I'm really looking forward to this, and I want to just briefly share your bio, and then we'll get into the discussion. So Freddie is a poet, a songwriter and performer, writing his way through experiences as a young trans person. Having recently finished university, he's written and released a series of singles throughout this past summer, each being showcased on BBC Radio, congratulations, <laughs> and endorsed by the likes of Lucy Spragan and Phil Taggart. I am out of the loop, so you're going to have to tell me who those people are. Um, spoken word sections and catchy hook melodies punctuate his unique brand of bedroom pop, which takes influence from indie soul, acoustic folk, and all of Freddie's favorite poets. He uses his music and poetry to share his journey towards finding self-love as a queer person, creating his own sound defined by thoughtful and playful lyricism, memorable top lines, and unreserved emotion. I think that's bang on. <laughs> <laughs> it took me long enough. <laughs> it's such a hard thing to try and describe what you do because you just yeah. do it. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. It, it takes sometimes, I think, stepping back to not just understand who we are, but also listening to what other, other people say. Um, and then you can pull together what you think really matches up with who you are and how you feel you're presenting. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Now, I'm trying to remember exactly um, how I encountered you. It was on Instagram, and I think it was because of another account that I follow. And you know how the algorithm is on Facebook and Instagram. And so something was posted. I think that was images or bits of poetry that you were sharing that related to uh, a song that you had just had a video out called Growing Pains. Can you tell us a little bit about that? And then we're going to actually watch it. Yeah. So, I mean, Growing Pains is, it was the first single that I released at the start of summer, 2nd of July. Mm -hmm. um, and it was the first bit of music that I put like out publicly, streaming services, mm -hmm. done the whole thing. And it, it kind of documents my whole sort of transition, but in a more, not from A to B in a sort of quite lucid way. And like the hard bits, the good bits, and kind of ends <clears> with <throat> a sort of a, a recounting of feeling happier and kind of getting more comfortable i think the last line is no more growing pains because i'm all grown yeah. um and yeah it kind of just flowed out of me and it's just a song that like i've never been able to go back and edit it was just it came out and it was yeah. like that's it i needed that and wow. it turns out other people did too yeah um yeah well when I saw it, I had tears in my eyes. It wasn't because it's sad. It's just because it's so pure on the level of emotion that comes out. And it's, uh, I want to say, and I don't mean this in a bad way. It, I just can't think of another word. It's so strangely genuine. And I think why I say strangely is because it's very hard to encounter really genuine um emotion or intention these days um it's almost ah the word will come to me i you know i i'm thinking <laughs> should i have prepared this little speech but it's just coming out of me it, it, it is would you be too embarrassed if we played it not at all okay I, i'm really proud of it so i, I don't listen to it very often because right. obviously in the production process i listen to it a lot of times but when right comes on i'm like oh i did that <laughs> you did that 
Well, let me uh, do this here for a moment. I've got to share my screen. And for those who are listening, as opposed to just watching the video, you're going to be able to hear it, which is just fantastic. When I was little, I felt the weight of something bigger. Couldn't put my finger on it without feeling like it's on the trigger of a weapon I don't understand or even know the name of, but I was staring down the barrel of myself like a face off. The mirror's looking at me funny, floods of feeling in my tummy, how the hell do I become me? When I grew taller, I felt the weight grow with me. Like I was living in the suburbs, but my home was in the city, it's a pity. Cause I know that I'm pretty, but in a way that never fit me, like the dresses in my broken closet. It wasn't easy, was it? Dwelling in a prison called my epidermis, growing pains, but with a different kind of hurting. And the worst thing is that when I see myself, I'm looking twice. I know that I'm in there, but part of me is a poltergeist from a different life that was never mine. I find segments of myself a couple beats out of time The mirror's looking at me funny Floods of feeling in my tummy How the hell do I become me? The mirror's looking at me funny Floods of feeling in my tummy How the hell do I become me? The other side of the danger years wiping off my tears With a name tag made of jet lag and my biggest fears Whiplash and dreaming of a moustache I'm sitting on the bus back and I see it just like that The rest of my days that were fading fast they start to flicker A bright red light I press play and I shake off the bitter The kid in the mirror started smiling like I've never seen And with the help of a prescription and a self-love remedy He starts to look like me Peel off the layers of pain and the heavy subsiding And the inside's less violent And the outside tells the truth And the world can see it brighter When I was little I felt the weight is something bigger But I've never felt lighter And I'm a fighter I will not give in And I'm just lucky to be out here existing In a flesh house of bones That I call home No more growing pains Cause I'm all grown One day things will look brighter. Your mind shines with truth and kindness. And you make your mum proud. You already teach others to love loud. One day, the love you have for the inside of you will be matched when your gaze meets itself. In the reflective glass on the wall. And you'll catch your face in your hands and it'll feel like yours. One day your body will be your home. And you'll be everything you want to be. And the boy in the mirror won't cry anymore. What's the first thought that comes to mind after listening, watching that? It was so much fun making that video. That was mm -hmm. what I was thinking about. Um, it was like, I, I found this videographer online yeah. and I, I flew him over and he stayed at my house and he's, cause I wanted another trans man to be the videographer. Amazing. Um, so that he could kind of understand in a different <clears throat> way. Um, and we just had so much fun. I was like, I'm going to wear all the outfits I wore as a kid. And he was like, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, it's really lovely. Um, there's a, there's a lot of layers that are happening in that video. I mean, first of all, the professional quality of that is amazing. I mean, for a first video, I've seen, you know, lots of people do videos that you know, maybe I've been doing this for quite some time. So, I mean, you lucked out with who you did, but the, the creative process, how, how much did you bring to, uh, the, what do you call it? The way in which you wanted to present in the video versus just the lyrics. Um, so the kind of the concept was me, the, yeah. the recreating childhood photos. And, uh, <clears throat> I sort of, I was like, I know what shots I want. Mm -hmm please can you make them pretty right. to Jackson. Jackson Lennon is the Jalen media. He's excellent. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
I was like, I want to have, this is when I had like a list of literally every line, this is what's going to be on screen. This is what we're going to have. And like how it kind of unfurled of like the first two verses, you see the outfits, but you don't get the reveal that they're the recreation. You just see the sort of montage of the pictures going up. And that was kind of, that was all in my brain for like cooking away for some months. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then, um, and then like Jackson made it look beautiful basically. No, he really did. And, you know, it's, well, there's, there's a couple of very moving points throughout. There's the series of images on your phone showing the transition process. Um, you know, reading through your poetry and sort of discerning um, some of what you went through, because I, you know, I can only imagine, but I haven't read like personal journals of yours or, or blog posts talking about your journey, only having recently uh, started following you on Instagram. But to see both the expression of happiness, of joy, of contentment, playfulness, um, and, you know, the words that come up are prettiness and um, just there's that, that the sort of last main verse where suddenly you're like you just lift yourself up when you're looking in the mirror because it's this you've you've hit the summit so to speak yeah, yeah. and that summit is a bookshop in toronto yeah um and and i think it's like really cool they have like this lovely little junction at that moment of just oh, really? like yeah I, when i say i'm sitting on the bus back and i see it just like that that's yeah. on the bus back from the bookshop in toronto okay well this might be you know with this could be could be a good like segue right into this because it was when you released a bookshop in toronto and i was listening to and this one you don't have a video for although i think uh, you had put together sort of montage of some images so like second or third time i'd heard it um and I thought, well, this is just perfect. Now I have to contact this person because <laughs> they were actually at Glad Day Bookshop in Toronto. Uh, and I thought, you know, I suppose that's a sign. If ever there's a sign that I should have you <laughs> on my show. <laughs> so uh, we've, we've got the lyrics and then you speak more at length through your poetry in Lilac Underpass. Um, so I'm going to put it in your hands here, maybe to tell us about this, this moment uh, at a bookshop in Toronto. It's, um, it's really difficult to describe without using cliches, yeah. which I try not to. Uh, <laughs> and I don't, I don't want to specifically because it's in so much of the media that surrounds trans people. There is this like transformational ethereal moment where like, mm. and it's often like layered with loads of trauma as well of like, cutting all your hair off or like putting yourself in a dangerous situation by presenting radically different to you had done before and like mm. is using these grand <laughs> gestures and it wasn't a grand gesture i think that's the main thing it was like a really tiny moment in a bookshop with my sister and my brother-in-law in glad day bookshop yeah. where a few events had kind of led up to it i'd been to like a gender into inclusivity workshop and i'd used they them pronouns for the first time and that didn't cut it. And I was like, oh, I think I know what I really want, to be honest. Um, mm. <clears throat> I sort of was very good at sort of, no, no, come on now. Don't be, come on. And it was just this tiny moment in the bookshop where I just kind of, everything just sort of faded. And then I was like, oh, no, that's what I want. And it was sort of inspired by, I saw this trans man behind the book counter and he was like, just having a good he was just living just existing mm -hmm. he had a normal maybe like a saturday job i don't know he looked <clears> quite young he was wearing a nice jumper and some pins and he wasn't grandiose in any way but he, mm -hmm. he was just sort of content and i'd not seen that kind of trans representation before and i just sat there and was like oh that does feel a lot like what i want to feel like um mm -hmm. uh in and that i I can't quite achieve how I currently am. And yeah, it was just a really little one. <laughs> how many years ago was this? <clears throat> this was three and a half years ago. Oh. It's 2018, summer 2018. Yeah. And where were you on your journey, if I may ask, a lot at that point? <clears throat> I was, um, what, do, what do you mean? 
Well, were you uh, thinking about or were you transitioning at that point? I was I I was well in the closet and well yeah. repressing okay. to myself. Okay. Um, I'd been binding for several years. Yeah. Um, for any, chest compression for anyone mm -hmm. who doesn't know. Um, and I'd sort of questioned it, and I was presenting very masculine all mm -hmm. from from the start of puberty, pretty much. Mm -hmm. Um, bar a funny six months where I performatively tried yeah. to be more feminine and it <clears throat> didn't go to plan um but yeah i was i was well in the closet and then and this this one moment was like oh i deserve more mm -hmm. like, i i kind of deserve to be be truer than this and yeah, yeah. what's well, an interesting challenge i mean i know those words don't express <laughs> what you went through what any trans person goes through i mean you know, there's there's coming out of the closet as somewhere along the, you know, uh, initialism of L, G, uh, B, Q. Um, and then there's being trans, which you know, has so many more layers of of challenge, um, you know, socially, individually, physiologically, um, you know, and I can't I can't speak to it other than having spoken to people like yourself or other people that I know or. Um, you know, like one of my clients, and I can't presume, um, we all have our um, ways of seeing the world. Um, but I guess the um, one of the interesting things uh, I've, I've, I've noticed, at least uh, with you is this integration of the color lilac there's a there's a great importance there you should tell us more about that and this idea of prettiness while also playing with becoming more masculine which some might say is a contradiction but you know fuck that you know this <laughs> you can do whatever you want <laughs> so maybe yeah. tell us a little bit about those two things and what those mean to you yeah i mean one of the lyrics in bookshop in toronto is um it was, it used to be, I was never pretty till the right. day that I saw the truth, but it's lonesome in the city. Yeah. And I changed it because I didn't want to say that I was never pretty. Right. But what I meant by that was exactly what you're saying, which is that I, in many ways, I'm a lot more feminine now than before I came out. Right. And my music is too. Um, and I think that what you're kind of afforded a different freedom with with masculinity femininity with female <laughs> coded colors with that kind of stuff when uh you assimilate like cisgender appearance like i walk down the street and people don't know that i'm trans mm -hmm. um and i think that's something that is I, I it's very easy for me to overlook now because that's my reality now but i i always kind of make a point of saying something about it because before i was i hate the word passing but cis assimilating before i was cis assimilating mm -hmm. i i was kind of not if i if i was sort of i don't know loving pale pink i was i was misgendered and i was devalued whereas <clears throat> now those things are kind of a very intrinsic part of me and i think i sort of i'm clocking my privilege here of like because i'm a, a cis assimilating trans man right i'm celebrated for those things yeah. and it's really interesting Yeah. <laughs> well, um, I think the direction we want to go here now, let's, maybe I could ask you about the whole creative process. Um, and we'll weave back and forth between issues of identity and your story and in and all of that. But how did that first happen for you? Have you been sort of creative in some way artistically since since being very young? How did that finally show up as writing and singing? I think it started as writing. It yeah. was always words first and it can, it still is. It yeah. still is very words orientated. I'm I'm an okay acoustic guitarist and I'm an okay pianist and I'm an okay bassist, but I'm <coughs> I'm not a like excellent musician. Mm -hmm. Um really i'm i'm quite quite good at singing i've got better at that recently with my new voice drop mm -hmm. but my main thing is words and it always has been i used to write stories when i was little just like for fun um i always had sort of notebooks <coughs> on the go and 
I always found it really interesting the ways that you could say things and you could say things that weren't actually being said. And I always yeah. thought that was like a bit of magic when I was a kid. Yeah. Um, and I wrote like really poor metaphors that had <laughs> so many, so <laughs> many loose ends. And like, I was like, this is amazing. <laughs> you think that I'm talking about a door, but really I'm talking about time. Yeah. <sighs> and, um, and I loved it. I thought it was amazing. <laughs> I was like, I'm a genius. <laughs> um, That's what we all say when we're just starting out writing. <laughs> yeah, you're like, oh my God, how did I come up with this? <laughs> um, but yeah, it's always been words. And now it's very much like, I'm always just writing down a few little words. Or like if I'm reading and I see a sentence, I'm like, That's <clears throat> amazing. That's five words that said like a page yeah. of prose to me. Yeah. Um, I think that's the magic of it, isn't it? I think so. I mean, it it looks like a gift sometimes. I mean, maybe some people are more more gifted than that, and there's always that argument about is 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 talent inborn or you know can you um, can yeah. you learn? Well, <clears throat> who knows? It's experience, it's environment, it's ways of thinking, it's perspective. Um, <clears throat> you know, I just looked at. Uh, when you talk about turns of phrases and how you can say certain things like uh, in um, <clears throat> a lilac underpass, one of the uh, pieces nerve endings, the last two lines are, it becomes difficult to feel small then when my insignificance is exactly what makes me. Mm. And your your poems are filled with one or two liners like this. Mm. It's, it was not the wreckage which made me, but the aftermath. And the poem is called Aftermath Trans Joy. Um, and there was like maybe one or two, well, there's, there's quite a few. Um, and, and I just found that there were some really, um, when I say simple, I don't mean simple as in not uh, not artistic. I mean, simple is often best when it really gets to the truth of things, right? Um, it, it's expressed in the least amount of words and people will listen, hear that and say, wow, how did you think of that? Because it is so few words, but it makes the most sort of profound impact. So resilient um, is the one that really stood out to me. Uh, where really what you're talking about is no longer accepting uh, the opinions or expectations of other people. And so you write, there was only the discomfort of those around that leaked into my self-perception, but that you end, I will tell you that I have simply decided not to bear the pain that does not belong to me. And that's what I mean by simple. It's, it's simple, but it's profound. Um, and I, my, my question here would be, how have those words been received? How has your story in, in, in some of these poems or songs really touched other people, trans or otherwise? I think um, the, I didn't really, I wasn't ready for them to touch people in terms of like, I wasn't, it wasn't on my radar because I was like, I like the song and, and mm. you have it kind of thing, especially specifically when Growing Pains came out. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> and just the way that people have reached out and the things that people have said is, I think the biggest feeling is feeling seen and feeling like understood. And I think that's all people like really want from art is just to like see themselves reflected in it mm -hmm. and, and to have their story told in a way that they can't or they do in a different way yeah um and that's all i really can do i'm not very good at writing like sort of fictional songs yeah. um <clears throat> all i can really do is just sort of tell you what's happened mm -hmm. <laughs> in a nice in a nice way yeah and and it <clears throat> seems to be a value to people my my mum actually just read through the poetry book for the first time last night mm -hmm. And obviously she's she's seen it all that last great poem which sort of spans the last few years of my life um mm -hmm. she's she's been there through all of it and she was like very moved um mm -hmm. 
she was very proud of me, which is nice. And I think it's it's nice for people to see sort of possibilities for themselves, just like that yeah. trans man that I saw in a bookshop in a bookshop in Toronto. I was going to say in the Glad Day bookshop, <clears throat> kind of just for people to see a possibility that they can just do what, do what they love and be happy and happen to be trans. Mm -hmm. Is um. I didn't realize how much that would mean to people, but I think it does mean a lot to people. Yeah. You know, and then this is not a, a, a right or wrong. This is just an observation. Um, people are really having to fight for their rights and their freedoms and trans people, especially. And, you know, I follow a lot of people, whether it be on medium or elsewhere who are being very politically engaged and, um, it's it's a tough space to be in and i know that's an understatement i've i've been part of you know queer advocacy in the past and it demands a lot of energy it requires a, a very powerful ability to know how to manage contention and argument and and discord um things that i can speak well about but i'm not so good at in the moment <laughs> so and it's not to say we shouldn't pay attention to those things because these are the people that are, are really bringing to bear um, some of the injustices and willing to confront it and talk about it but at the same time it's so important that we celebrate and i think what you really demonstrate uh goes back to that simpleness this genuineness is is pride yeah i i i think as well i'm i've I've done some like activism stuff and I sort of, I write some things about that. I, I, I tend not to as much nowadays, um, <clears throat> but I seem to have simultaneously more impact. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's really, it took a long time for me to accept that, like being visible and being proud of myself and just genuinely backing yeah. myself yeah. is the form of advocacy and, and, it's not everything i know it's not i'm not going to change any policies this way but i think it does empower other trans people and i think empowering a generation of queer people mm -hmm. um if i can be a tiny part of that that's what changes that's what changes a whole society all it all at once as we as we grow older and mm -hmm. if i can do that then if i can be i don't know do that for one person then that would be that would be sick Amazing. And, and exactly. I mean, we, we need to have <clears throat> the joy and the observation in uh, the satisfaction and contentment and happiness with who we are. Um, and then sometimes there are the harder moments. Uh, but we, we can't be all things, otherwise we'll burn ourselves out. Yeah. Um, so I was really glad to, to read your bio for your musical uh, description. But um, you know, I, I continuously get this feel of almost like a beat poetry um, sort of feel with your work. I mean, because there is that uh, sort of beat in the background. And then I was trying to think what it was. And you remind me so much of like Tracy Chapman's first album and Fast Car, except a lot happier. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great reference. That's yeah. a big compliment. Thank you. Yeah. But there's, it's just the way in which you look inward and the way that you express that, that, you know, uh, Tracy Chapman did. And there's that, you know, folksy um, rap beat poetry sort of that m maybe there's a, a large genre of that music out there. I haven't maybe been exposed to it or heard it, but I just like I, I could listen to your music in the background and it sort of surprised me. And I, I think it's just um, well, this could lead into the next question. You know who who how do you create your music to go with your words because there's a consistency there's definitely a, a sound uh which is wonderful uh but it's so accessible but it's not uh, and it's got a poppy feel but it doesn't it doesn't feel um like everything else can you write reviews for me <laughs> that, was, that was great it's wonderful <laughs> Um, <laughs> I um, I think it's um, it's always acoustic guitar first. Mm -hmm. uh, 
it's usually acoustic guitar and words as as one um especially if there's a melody so if when i'm writing hooks or when i'm writing i do have a couple of songs that are <coughs> melodic based rather than poetry based and then it's really paying attention to the words and building it around it so in in very obvious ways like i use a lot of sonic imagery in bookshop there's like page turns as instrumentation in the in those explicit ways right and then in the sort of more subtle ways of <clears throat> okay this song um sort of has a trajectory of this so mm -hmm. you follow that trajectory with the instrumentation and mm -hmm. both in terms of crescendo diminuendo like how loud it gets and also with how complex or how simple it gets um and it's re like it, everything stems from the words for me um yeah things pick up things get happier when it gets happier mm -hmm. if i'm doing the opposite it's for a reason it's because there's an undertone and it's it's um it's a very like i i sort of treat my songs like babies and i'm like what do you need what do you really really need yeah <laughs> yeah and so what will be uh i don't, I don't know you might not be able to tell us <laughs> have you got another video in the works i haven't i haven't got another video um yeah. I, I sort of had the budget for one. Yeah, it and looked like, like that was probably uh, uh, there was probably a bit of a good cost to that because it was beautifully done. It was it was a sort of a semi labor of love. Yeah, and uh, and a semi here's me here's me buying some pizzas um, <laughs> and paying for flights and etc. Because he came yeah. from Ireland and. Um, and I was very, very lucky that I had someone who cared about the project to sort of kind of lend me that. Um, I would love to make another video. I'd love to make a video for All I Have Is I, just because there's so much imagery in it, it would be so much fun. Yeah. Uh, the That might be something that I do in the new year, mm -hmm. um, but it's not something that I can sort of do right now. Right now I'm doing, I'm doing poems and songs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Just pardon me for saying. I don't want to cough into the <laughs> microphone. So, how are you? I, you know, I've, I'm noticing you're you're um, showing up on Instagram. You're participating in some events. Um, how are you getting yourself out there so that people can either hear your poetry or your music? I'm I'm trying my best. Yeah. That's what I'm doing. I um I'm an independent artist. Yeah. I don't have a manager i would love a manager but i don't have a manager mm -hmm. and i'm just doing the best i can and sort of trusting that the right people will find it mm -hmm. um i've been very fortunate that spotify have really supported growing pains and have supported me put me on the cover of their transcend playlist which was awesome amazing um yeah and bbc introducing have been really supportive of my music as well um and then the rest is kind of just like putting my art out there i make tiktoks of these little poems that tend to find people um and just just telling people there's there's um uh, there's no kind of hidden master plan there's just like a spreadsheet that's like make sure you pop something on instagram today make it interesting yeah don't say the same thing you said three weeks ago yeah, yeah. um and that's that's kind of it it's just me and and i think that's kind of the right way for it to be for this project because it's so personal and it's yeah. just my baby and it's my kind of introduction to the world of like these are the things i want to tell you about um yeah. and and yeah it's just me <laughs> and and as an artist how are you uh, supporting yourself and your work are you working outside of this or are you putting all your energies into this right now no i'm i'm working i um yeah. I work as a as a personal tutor for students studying songwriting now, okay. um, which is a very lovely job, and yeah. I'm I'm very glad. I was working in a in a care home up until very recently, yeah. um, but but yeah, I I don't mind doing sort of two things. It's mm -hmm. um it's got advantages because you have different experiences, and different experiences lead to writing different things. Mm -hmm. Um, there's definitely a lot of value in like not um having the pressure of of full freelance of mm -hmm. um all the time you have to kind of keep booked up and stuff so that's i'm i'm sort of very grateful that i'm that i'm able to do two things and and two things that i love as well oh good 
<laughs> and let's transition then into your your big project, uh, Lilac Underpass Mixtape. What is that yeah. all about? What what should we be looking for? What do we need to know? <clears throat> <clears throat> what do you need to know? Um, it is uh, been working on it since January. Mm -hmm. It's um, I decided I sat down at my kitchen table on January the sixth of this year and was like, right, I'm gonna I'm gonna do something. <laughs> and um, that day was like when I made the first demo for the first track, which is all I have is I track one, and um, <clears throat> it kind of talks about a lot of things. It talks about um, all I have is I actually sort of lightly touches on my relationship with writing this idea of the lilac underpass is kind of the idea of finding solace and finding joy in what can be quite a stressful life. Um, not just for me, but for everyone, there's, there's stress everywhere. There's a lot mm -hmm. to get your head around mm -hmm. and kind of finding joy where you are rather than putting it somewhere in the future in um, something distant or extraordinary, um, leaving it, leaving it in the mundane and, for me i've been able to do that through writing so it's kind of um writing is my lilac underpass shall we say yeah um <clears throat> and it the the songs talk about all my experiences and i fill it up with lots of everyday experience lots of mundane imagery lots of bus rides and talk about hot drinks about four times in the in the seven songs and yeah. um it's it's just kind of full up of my life <laughs> so it's a lot of tea drinking yeah it's a lot of tea there's some coffee as well <laughs> i think i say kettle as well a biscuit and yep. one of, i'm trying to think of the lyrics there's um yep. yeah there's a lot of tea drinking <laughs> and it looks like it's kind of a whole package that you're releasing yeah it's it's with a poetry book actually yeah. this one lovely um and the poetry book kind of goes a little bit deeper into some of the the things that the songs are about and the origin stories and the scenes i paint i do a lot of imagery in my lyrical content and so i wanted to be able to explore some of the scenes that i'm talking about yeah um it goes through kind of like a lot of healing that i've done through like in terms of growing pains kind of healing and also in terms of like grief and loss yeah um talk about falling in love I talk yeah. about missing my sister when she moved to Canada. I talk yeah. about all sorts, all sorts of feelings. It's lots of feelings. <laughs> That's all music is, isn't it? That's such a non-sentence. It's like, oh, I'm just a uh, new type of music, actually. I'm going to talk about feelings. It's what wild. you're talking about, your feelings. And, yeah, I guess. <clears throat> and then if, you know, to connect what you said earlier um treating your songs like uh, a baby and what do they need and how to take care of them um you know the you can sometimes listen to music and the songs are being sung um you're you're maybe that is one of the things i wasn't aware of that makes me want to listen because i can hear or slash feel um that you're emoting that you're um it, it's not a it's, it's, you're probably going to be like wow thanks for the comparison <laughs> favorite all-time artist david bowie oh i can just like i can feel everything bowie sings even though i know he had this structure of taking sometimes things he wrote and he cut them up and he would move lines all over the place but like mm -hmm. <gasps> yeah for me i can't not listen to david bowie when david bowie comes on and then i go down a rabbit hole of like oh, okay let's go play the bowie playlist now right <laughs> um but yeah, as the, you know, the other day I was just working away and I thought, oh, I'll just play your music in the background. I'm like, well, I'm not going to work now. I'm going to actually pay attention to what he's saying because <laughs> I thought I would listen Sorry. to it first in the background and then go back and, and listen to it more um, attentively, right? Just to give myself like a double pass uh, to get sort of like a first impression. And But it was like, no, it demanded I pay attention um, <laughs> without you banging me over the head with it. <laughs> Excuse me. Listen to this, please. <laughs> And maybe that's what you said earlier is just wanting to be seen. Um, mm. That, that comes through very clearly. Mm. I think um, 
that's such a compliment that you that you felt grabbed uh yeah. in some way by by the, by my music <clears throat> i think um with with art one of my main things i love about it is that i will never properly understand what it's like to listen to it as not me yeah and it's really nice that it's nice to hear what what it's like to listen to it as not me yeah. because um that's the beauty of it it's so different to every single person yeah. like i do it and i think that like hey this is a good song and and i'm proud to show people this but i don't know when people have listened to it and how it's touched them and whether it's grabbed their attention or whether they've switched it because it reminds them of someone or like what all these little moments that kind of my songs soundtracked um yeah. i think what you said about being seen and and feeling seen like i definitely think um anyone who writes songs and myself included there is an element of of listen to me because yeah. why that's the whole thing like no one yeah. makes a song and then they're like actually no one listen to it <laughs> um like or the, put it on spotify and then be like no yeah. Yeah. like it's obviously part of it is about people listening to it and <clears throat> the the best thing in the world is when like it's part of you but it becomes part of someone else's they see yeah. them in it you see you in it and it kind of like there's that bridge between two complete strangers that is is so cool yeah. sorry i went very off topic there <laughs> oh no you stayed completely on topic i think i, went, I just sort of did a little loop yeah. loop yeah. um yeah i just i i really like music <laughs> yeah, well it's, it's like, like you have a message to share and you know I've, I've i've had that a couple times i remember one time somebody wrote me about one of my podcasts and i i think this was one where i only had an outline i wasn't uh it wasn't grounded in a, in a fully written article. And um, I know in that show, I had sort of started a conclusion and I just sort of closed my eyes. And this is when I wasn't doing video. And I just, because, you know, I know the topic and it's in the realm of coaching. And the person came back and he's like, what you said there was amazing. I'm like, really? And I went back and listened to it. I'm like, oh my God, that was amazing. I had no idea I wrote that. How did I even say that? I wasn't even... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you never know your best art. You never know the best bit that you do. Yeah. Um, and and the growing pains when I first wrote it, I I didn't like it the very first time. Yeah. And I think part of that is because it's so honest and it was a little bit uncomfortable for me. <clears throat> mm -hmm. So I was like, oh, it's like this is a bit much. This is very naked. Yeah. Um, but you never know the best bit. People love lines of certain songs that I think are the lines that I nearly changed. Mm -hmm. Um. And, and it sounds like you've had the same experience of like, you've done your best work when you're just kind of like, not really, not really concentrating, not planned it, not done yeah. anything. It's, um, it doesn't really belong to me anymore now that it's, or once it's out, <clears throat> it, it doesn't belong to me anymore. It's a subtle art, whether it be writing prose or writing poem or painting to, to be in the flow, to be in the creative flow. And, you know, we always have to edit whatever we're doing or whether we're touching up a painting or whether we're refining a poem and cutting back or looking up another word or even in an article, it's like, is this sentence too long? Is the grammar a mess? Uh, but when you're speaking from the heart, um, the more you edit it, the further away you get from the truth, mm. I think. So it's, it's, but it's like, when do you stop? <laughs> and Sometimes when there's that uncomfort um, or discomfort, that's maybe the best time to stop. Um, yeah. yeah, Growing Pains didn't let me edit it. It just didn't. There was like two lines that I just, I tidied up yeah. and it didn't, the song didn't let me edit it. I tried to change a few bits and sort of tidy up some that I thought was sort of a bit repetition-y or, mm -hmm. you know, I could say it in a more interesting way or whatever. <clears throat> and the song just sort of, was like no freddie you're yeah. leaving that as it is and i was like all right then yeah. <laughs> okay cool <laughs> is there something as yet unpublished or something that is in um lilac underpass that is is your favorite piece so far oh that is there's a song on lilac I love all of the four, there's four new songs on Lilac Underpass Mixtape because there's the three that have come out and then there's four new. And yeah. I love them all for very different reasons. 
um, that there is one one on there called Little Less Love, mm -hmm. um, which is track number five. And it talks about grieving my, my grandparents. Mm -hmm. And the it kind of ends with this sort of outro it's the most like prose like section of the whole mixtape and it's so my poetry is very sort of brief as mm. you said like quite simple but it's the most sort of it's very free form and very kind of i almost can't quite fit the lines to the rhythm and that's okay they kind of are a bit more lucid and mm. that, that that bit is a really really special bit for me in the mm. in the, in the mixtape and it um I wrote it on a day when it had been about a year since I'd written the first bit of the song. And the first bit of the song is um, when I was very much grieving and um, it's kind of talking about much in my style. It's talking about getting through with everyday things. I'll get through with to-do lists and coffee that's gone cold. Mm -hmm. um, I'll pull my socks up with a box of letters that you wrote. And um I was still kind of going, oh God, will I get through this? Um, mm -hmm. There's a there's a little less love here without you. That's the mm -hmm. last line of the chorus. And then in the, the sort of outro poem section, uh, it concludes, there's a little less love here from you because you gave it all to me. And it kind of sums up what I've learned about loss is that like, I kind of believe when people have given all their love to you, and mm -hmm. they go, and I have it with me now. Mm -hmm. And that kind of process of the year, the year difference between that section and that section and <clears> the contrast in my relationship. And there's still a lot of grief in that and a lot of sadness, but there's a lot of like hope. And um, that whole song just like encapsulates what my grieving process was. And then mm -hmm. after the, the outro poem, it's the chords on piano and it's um, rain and birds, rain and birds song. And it just like gives you a minute to kind of reflect on the song. <clears throat> and I, when I listen to it, I'm just like so close to my grandparents, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, it's um, it's a big part of like this kind of project spans stories that have punctuated the last sort of two to three years of my life, and it's a big yeah. part of that. And um, I, I couldn't have put it better. <laughs> I'm really proud of the way the way I put it. Wonderful. <laughs> yeah. So who is like your biggest supporter or who, who are you able to depend on in, in, in the journey that you've had in your life? Because you seem very self-assured, very content with who you are. And that's not to say you don't have your challenges as we all do, or you have your bad days. Um, and you, but you don't give me the impression that you're just putting on a happy face. You seem genuinely like, oh, I'm so happy to be here. Yeah. Um, I, my, I'm very lucky that I've got a lot. Um, mm -hmm. My my nan was probably one of my biggest supporters um, mm -hmm. and still is, uh, but it's a sort of a different relationship now. Um, mm -hmm. And she definitely started me on the music thing she was a pianist she used to play piano she ran the wi choir she mm -hmm. was an icon um mm -hmm. uh, my sister is really supportive of me mm -hmm. um she sort of knows me inside out all the best bits all the worst bits <laughs> um she can see my mistakes coming a mile off it's it's a superpower um my yeah my mum and my stepdad my dad um I guess the big one sort of recently is me. Um, mm. That sounds interesting, but I don't mean that in a like, I don't need anyone way, just mm. like mm. sort of learn how to prop myself up and treat myself well. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I guess, I guess family. I've got some really good friends um, in Bristol, Jody and Charlie, and I'm, I'm, I'm just like very, I, I I've got a lot more comfortable with receiving love from people and when you become comfortable with it you become grateful for it and yeah. then you re then you're receiving it even when they're not giving it because you're just full up of all the nice things yeah um and I guess that that's a 
long answer. Everyone, I don't know. <laughs> Everyone That's and me. And, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, you you just said the last uh, bit there is what my um, personal purpose is. When you freely love who you are, you can freely create the life you want. And I say freely twice because freely is one of my core values. Um, and, and freely means, you know, when you freely love who you are, um, it means you've, you've let go of the conditions, especially external expectations, which you write about in your poetry. And you have to love yourself first um, before you can fully receive the love of other people. And we all want attention, connection, and care, which translates into love. <laughs> so it and it it need it you know may not always be balanced, but it, there needs to be uh, like a, a cycle constantly back and forth of of what we give, what we receive, and the various parts of attention, connection, and care we give. So you know it's wonderful that you have that, and you're you're very fortunate. That's great. Yeah, I am. Um... Yeah, I think what you said about kind of removing conditions, freely love yourself. That's mm -hmm. definitely something that like, that was the sort of the final part for me of like getting to where I am of re removing those conditions. Mm -hmm. It's so easy to um, love yourself most when you achieve most or when you, uh, when you people please most, when you, when you give to others most. And it's only really sort of the last year or so when those conditions have just sort of slowly I've caught them out and gone, oh, no, that's not that's not how I would give love to my friend. That's, mm -hmm. not, that's not how I would do it to someone else. Um, yeah. Yeah, I love that. What was the phrase you said again? Freely. When you freely love who you are, you can freely create the life you want. Yeah, that's fantastic. I love that. Yeah. It's there's an example of simplicity. I mean, the, the short story on that is I was doing a 30 day transformational um, coaching program it was a by my coach and it was for other coaches and every day there was like an hour to 90 minutes of, of of practice it was intensive and the last exercise was developing your your personal purpose or or mission statement and you went through quite an intensive exercise and i uh, then you pull it together from a bunch of different uh ways of getting to the possible answer and i wrote it out and i'm like oh it feels so like whatever <laughs> <laughs> and then I wrote to the coach saying that's what I felt like and he's like really maybe you should read that again and I sat on it and the next day I was like holy shit this is exactly what my bloody life has been about this whole and it's just it's so simple and that's all it is and then I didn't even realize that it connected my values so yeah <laughs> I want to sort of uh, bring us towards the end here and 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 find out I don't know if your involvement with uh this UK organization create space is is the work that you're doing you were saying tutoring oh uh, no that's a different thing so I work okay. freelance with we create space to okay. deliver like workshops and stuff with them well tell us a little bit more about that because that's I, I think that's exactly how i first found out about you i was following create space to see what they're doing um which they were terming for a little while like their queer leadership series and then mm -hmm. they started um doing i think a recent series that you were part of about expressing yourself through music or creativity yeah we so i think i started working with we create space last last summer yeah um I could be a bit earlier than that. It's time, time is weird, isn't it? Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I worked with them on a, a workshop uh, called My Story, uh, My Story and I, or it was empowering queer people to tell their stories in, in creative and sort of nuanced ways that work mm -hmm. for them. Mm -hmm. And so I, I, I sort of shared my experience with telling my story through songwriting. And there was, um, person Lolo who they talked about mm -hmm. sharing their experiences through like sort of mixed methods and collage and self-portraiture and Ben they talked about <clears throat> like expression through clothing and Shiva talked about expression through dance and it was kind of creative self-expression for queer people um, and the most recent one was uh, this music is my manifesto which is um, a workshop I facilitated again empowering people to use creative methods and we kind of concluded with writing a manifesto mm -hmm. um and i just we create space are just 
they really center queer experience and creativity which are like kind of my two jams right mm -hmm. and and i love working with them um because they just they really care about like giving people these sort of holistic empowering creative and quite sometimes quite practical tool-based kind of sessions and it, it um there's always just such a like beautiful vibe and then in these like their zoom sessions um i think cu currently but they're <clears> looking toward perhaps there'll be some in-person ones sort of in the future mm -hmm. um but like never is there or like warmer group of people on zoom um wonderful they they yeah there was a great organization not for profit and led by some wonderful people and yeah uh, they're free as well so if anyone yeah. is listening to this and wants to go to one of the workshops it's like we create space on instagram and there's tons of amazing stuff that they do that's wonderful. I mean, I, one of my interests or sort of, you know, uh, but yeah, I guess I say interests or things that fascinates me is, uh, whether it be from my own experience as a gay man or a queer experience, um, we have such call it a gift for creativity because often, uh, queer identifying individuals, LBG, LGBTQ people will use creativity to express their uniqueness or as a way of being seen. Um, and, you know, we've seen this in ball culture um, in the United States. We see this in what's happening with Create Space. We see this in, you know, the, the decimation um, in the 80s and the 90s through HIV AIDS of all of the artists and the dancers and the writers who were gay. Um, and it just went to show where all the creativity lived. <laughs> and I'm not saying we own creativity as quite <laughs> queer people, but we're pretty good at it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think it's like, do you think it's sort of related to having to express like express yourself in more creative ways always because you can't always tell someone um i guess i guess there must be some sort of correlation there because there is definitely yeah. like a really amazing collection of creatives in the in the lgbtq plus community yeah i think the the you know a basic idea and this is something i learned from a book i read and a, a, a coaching program I attended for, uh, it was called Gay Men and the New Way Forward. It was, it was specific to the gay male experience, but we also talked about, you know, how this could apply to lesbians, to trans experience, to in that if you grow up in the closet in any way, whether you're not sure if you're identifying as trans in some way, whether you're not sure if you're identifying as like gay or, you know, non-binary or whatever, um, in not living your authentic truth and your authentic identity, um, you become a very good observer, or you, you can. And then you might try to express in alternative ways until you finally do, or then when you do finally fully come out and embrace that, well, you've had this breadth of experience of looking at the world in a slightly different way. I, you know, I, I kind of like the expression of having lived on the margins. So you're on the outside looking in, which gives you a better perspective or just a different perspective. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. So last couple of questions, not so much about what's coming next for you, because we've, we've talked about that, but what's, what's your dream? Do you have like a really big, crazy, I don't know if I could ever accomplish this dream in my life? I think my my only I'm I'm very content sort of with yeah. what what I'm doing now mm -hmm. um and um I think my only dream is to do more of it yeah. <laughs> like, um like I would love to sort of get up and then go for a swim and then go and like record a cool live session in like made a veil yeah. and then do a big concert not too big it doesn't have to be I would just love, I would just love to do more of it. Mm -hmm. Um, that's, that's quite a cheesy answer, isn't it? Just like more of this, but that's kind of, that's kind of it. Just more of this full, full time artist and poet. That's, yeah. that's the dream. That's a pretty big dream. Once you're in that full time, that would be a lot. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Well, I am going to include all the ways in which people can link out from the show notes to find you, but where would be sort of the, the most important places for people to go or what do you want to let us know about uh, when Lilac Underpass mixtape is coming out? So the most important place to sort of the keep in touch place is probably Instagram. Um, okay. If you want to be even more amazing, you can go to my website and sign up to my mailing list. Mm -hmm. um, that's that's the two kind of best ways to keep in touch with what I'm up to. Mm -hmm. And Lilac Underpass mixtape comes out on the 29th of October. And if you get a minute, listen to it on Spotify, follow on Spotify, like it, download it, tell all your friends about it, play it loudly in a public space. Um, and you can buy my book, Notes from a Lilac Underpass, from Lulu Bookstore online. Mm -hmm. And it will be in a wide range of other global bookstores in the, sh in the near future. But the first place you'll be able to buy it is in Lulu Bookstore online, which you'll be able to find on my Instagram in the link in my bio. Link in bio, yeah. Link in bio. It's always link in bio. That's what it comes <laughs> back to. That's the whole music industry right yeah. there. Link yeah. in bio. <laughs> Brilliant. It has been an absolute pleasure having you on the show. I really appreciate you taking the time. Oh, thank you so much for having me and for, for asking such lovely questions and just being you. And yeah, it's been really, really lovely. Thank you. For those of you watching and listening, please share this episode <laughs> with someone that you care about or you think should uh, find out more about who Freddie Lewis is and listen to his music. Please. Thanks again. <laughs>